Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, take care that your devotion to Christ is not corrupted. For many years in the early 1800s, Sir Walter Scott was the leading literature figure of the British Empire. Nobody could write as well as him. But then Lord Byron's work began to appear, and his greatness was immediately apparent. Soon, an anonymous critic praised his poems in a London newspaper. He declared that in the presence of these brilliant works of poetic genius, Scott could no longer be considered England's foremost poet. It was later discovered that the anonymous reviewer had been none other than Sir Walter Scott himself. There is a distinction between jealousy and envy. To envy is to want something that belongs to someone else. The scriptures states, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, or his wife, or his servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Instead, jealousy is the fear that something we possess will be taken from us by someone else. Although jealousy can apply to our jobs, our possessions, our reputations, the word more often refers to the anxiety that arises when we fear that a loved one affection will be lost to a rival. We fear that our partner or perhaps our children are attracted to someone else who compared to us seems more attractive, capable, and successful. In the same way, in the reflection for this day, we see the genuine restlessness of the apostle of the Gentiles who with divine seal show his concern for the Christian converts in the ancient city of Corinth. In the Greek, Corinthos was an ancient and modern city in the Peloponnese in south central Greece. The remains of the ancient city are still located about 50 miles or 80 kilometers west of the city of Athens, at the eastern end of the Gulf of Corinth, on a terrace about 300 feet or 90 meters above the sea level. The writing in the second letter to the Corinthians tells us, For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or different kind of gospel than the one you believed. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 2 to 4. When talking about jealousy, we must clarify that there are two kinds of jealousy that we must talk about today. Did you know that jealousy can be healthy or harmful? Healthy jealousy is a means of protecting something of our own and comes from sincere care and commitment to our relationship. On the other hand, unhealthy and sick jealousy manifests itself through lies, threats, self-pity, and feelings of inadequacy, inferiority, and insecurity. 
The seal that the Apostle Paul felt for the church at Corinth was a sincere concern that the evil enemy might snatch from the path of salvation a soul that had been rescued from the clutches of sin through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. Using that background, Paul describes the Corinthian believers as betrothed to Christ our Savior. They belong to a Christ in the same way that a promised bride belonged to her promised husband in the ancient world. They were Christians, but they were not yet with Christ in his heavenly kingdom. Paul saw that it was his duty to protect them from anyone who would try to rob them of their true faith in Christ before they would be safe with him in eternity. The false apostles, the ravenous wolves, by teaching a different gospel and about a different Jesus, were trying to do exactly that. Like a father protecting his beloved daughter, Paul felt divinely and appropriately jealous for the Corinthians on behalf of Christ. It was more than his duty to protect them from the false teachings. This was personal to him. Paul warned from those days that the ravening wolves would approach in all church ages, that men would come teaching contrary to the teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ and also changing the truth of the gospel. We must be careful because as in the times of Adam and Eve, the enemy deceived the woman and knocked down the first couple in the Eden of God's presence and protection. These threats today can corrupt your spirit and devotion to Jesus Christ, our Savior. I want you to understand one thing clearly this day. We are not talking about differences in doctrine, in knowledge about some issues that today divide the Church of Jesus Christ. I have said it on previous occasions, and I emphasize it again, that knowledge does not grant us salvation. Salvation is solely and exclusively through Jesus Christ and His redemptive sacrifice for sinners. The writing in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, it is worth mentioning that the authorship of this book is attributed to the Apostle Luke approximately in the year 33 of our era. In addition, the writer of the Gospel of Luke was a doctor by profession. The author strongly admonishes us then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stand before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verses 10 to 13. The scripture then tells us that there is no salvation apart from the name of Jesus. Any teaching or doctrine that contradicts God's plan of salvation for humanity is a deception orchestrated by the enemy of our lives. There are a specific points that cannot be changed or altered, and if they are presented in a different way, be alert, that comes from the evil one. A teaching that contradicts the love, kindness, and sacrifice of Christ for our redemption is a false doctrine. If someone wants to teach you another way than through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, run away immediately. If someone wants to convince you that sin is a way of life or the consequence of living in this world and that in the end the Lord will save your soul even if you trample His blood and His sacrifice today, get away from that person as soon as possible. That is contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. If someone wants to convince you that the important thing is that you feel good about yourself because this is the way to go, even so you commit 
aberrations as long as you repent later, walk away without thinking it twice. If someone wants to convince you that the gospel that matters is prosperity, and so the more you give to their ministry, the more the Lord will bless you, get away as soon as possible. It is true that the Lord blesses the cheerful giver, but this is not about promoting a gospel of greed. This had no hesitation about openly teaching their doctrine of business with God, where the most important thing is material prosperity, a sign or demonstration of divine blessings. They tell you that if you are not prosperous in your life, it is your fault. They blame poor people for their poverty, since it is because of their lack of faith or because they are living in sin. And so, economic prosperity and success are for them signs of holiness and of one who has God as a partner. They submit their members to a constant challenge to surrender their material and monetary goods in exchange for spiritual benefits and material multiplication. Brother, if someone wants to convince you that the path in this life is difficult as a human and that in reality sin is just a small and insignificant consequence before the love of God, that he will understand it and even so in the end he will grant you salvation, so don't worry about sinning, get away as soon as possible. If someone does not preach against sin, he is not preaching the truth of the gospel. Sin is a real problem, and it is a great threat to our soul. Sin is the reason why the Son of God had to come down to this earth, because it is a leprosy that gradually eats away at the soul of the human being. Let's not forget that God hates sin but not the sinner, and that is the love of God for the sinner. If you hear a gospel that encourages you to live the way you want, a gospel that doesn't mention topics about sin, a gospel that does not mention repentance, and that encourages prosperity as something important and essential and leaves Christ aside, that is not a message that comes from His Word. The Apostle Paul warned Timothy, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Let us abide by the teaching and warnings that were written in the Word of God. It is our destiny that we are talking about. Consider it for a moment. My dear friend and brother, in these final times, the world in which we live is one full of falsehood, selfishness, ambition, and hypocrisy. We must be alert so that our knowledge and our love for Christ is not corrupted as expressed by the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth. We were warned by the apostles who, inspired by the Holy Spirit, encouraged us not to let ourselves be deceived, as was the case with Eve at the beginning of creation. Let us not forget that the Scripture tells us that these stories were written for our teaching and admonition. Our kind and merciful God, we approach the throne of your grace with gratitude for so much demonstration of love toward us, that while we were still sinners, you sent your Son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Even though we don't deserve, you had loved us from our mother's womb. We present our hearts before you so that you can enlighten us on the path to follow in this world of darkness. Guide us through your Holy Spirit to the end of our journey. We come to ask and implore you in the inexhaustible merits of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.